This present is E zero electricity cost crypto currency mining password solar power bank on single boat computer. So we need twelve minutes and two discussion two minute discussions. Talk and two minute discussion. <coughs> yes. So I will start ten minutes from now. So good morning, everyone. My name is Fadia Purnama. I'm from Human Interface and Software Function Communication Laboratory, Kumamoto University. Although I come from Computer Science and Electrical Engineering, and I changed the title of my presentation a bit to suit the pace. And this is not our lab's uh, main research, but this is my personal research only. So I want to recruit future backup cryptocurrency miners, and I want to show my innovation, which is solar power bank on the board computers. So this presentation is about uh, cryptocurrency. There is a Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Ethereum. And if you know, don't know what they are, you can keep in mind that they are, um, they are a digital asset or a digital currency. So the cryptocurrency became a very hot topic ever since 2017 because it was once uh, below $1 and on 2017 it became the all time high of $19,000. And so most people, uh, newcomers, after 2017, including myself, are attracted to the market because of we want to get rich. And some crazy predictors such as John McAfee predicted that, one, that Bitcoin will become one million dollar in the future. However, as I dug deep, deeper into deeper cryptocurrency, I learned that that was not everything. So cryptocurrency is not just any digital currency, but, uh, but it is a new monetary system. The traditional monetary system works by uh, trusting our authority, power, and our trust to the third, see, third uh, party, such as banks. And while the, well, I will show you why this is bad during some times, while uh, the new monetary system, as you can see on the left side, it is a system where everyone can be their own banks. And it is a peer-to-peer -peer transaction, and so somehow using the algorithm and the network, we are able to reach consensus in the transaction. And the best thing about this is we don't need to give our power or our authority over our assets to anyone else. And I don't have the time to explain everything in detail. So I can just say that the attractive features are it is borderless. You can assess the, your assets anywhere at any time. And it is decentralized, so it makes it, make it powerful. If you use it correctly, it is private. And uh, the best feature is uncensored. So no one can tell you how to use your money. So this is a, so I would like to emphasize about the traditional monetary system. 
So, uh, so the traditional monetary system is a great system if the economy is doing great. But it is a dangerous system during an economic crisis because they wouldn't hesitate to sacrifice your asset to your asset to save their own system. For example, the hyper inflation in Venezuela, they have they it is difficult to withdraw even one dollar every day. And there are some other countries such as Zimbabwe, Argentina, Lebanon, and etc. So if you own a hard asset such as gold, real estate, or items, you're probably safe. And even though they are able to confiscate, for example, in 1933 in the US during the Nixon's uh, time, you still have uh, you still have authority over your assets, so you can protect them. But if you put them in a bank, it's already lost. While well, for Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, it is much harder to confiscate because no one knows whether you have one or not, and only you know where your your coin is, how to use it, and and where and where it is. So what makes the Bitcoin network strong and secure is because of the workers. And the workers, what the workers do, they are performing transactions, maintaining ledgers, the blockchain, or issuing new coins. The workers are called miners because they are rewarded with Bitcoin. And how to attack Bitcoin, you have to outperform the workers. So the current network hash rate is 65 million per hash per second. And you need 129. It means that you need at least 129 billion i7 computers to try an attack. But unfortunately, for Bitcoin mining today, it's very centralized. And so, if you are if you hold a very high authority in the in the world, you can target these farms. And if you able to destroy these farms, you are able to drastically weaken Bitcoin. And the competition is where, and because of this farm, it is very competitive where they will reap the large amount of the rewards, while we small miners are discouraged to mine. And also the larger processing power is proportional to the electricity, where, the, where it will cost more electricity. For example, there is a study in somewhere, it is a bar graph showing that a Bitcoin electricity cost uh, rivals a whole country. And here on the bottom I do a small experiment and using mining on a symbol word computer using Litecoin because it let is off electricity, it is uh, unprofitable. And I'm here uh, purely as a cryptocurrency supporter, I would like to recruit more miners because the because the more the honest miner, the more secure the network is. But most importantly, uh, is to decentralize the miner. So more miner, secure network doesn't mean a strong network. So a strong network means that it is hard to destroy the network. For example, which is, if you look at the image over, over the left or on the right, you will see which one is easier to destroy, to destroy a single farm, or do you, is it harder, is it easier to just tell everybody to stop mining? So that's why the objective is to educate ordinary people to mine in this presentation and based on the previous slide is to encourage the use of green energy for mining. So before I start with my innovation, so I will say, I will do some special notes. So do you need any special software to mine? So on the right, on the left side, there is an M100 S17, cost $1,654. But the answer is not necessary. Uh, for example, there is a graphic card, your personal computer, your laptop, there is a phone and a single board. If you can even mine on your on your phone or a single board computer for as long as it is a computer. But it is just less unprofitable. And how about for ordinary people? So the softwares are already available online thanks to most programmers today, even though a long time ago it may be hard, so for example on smartphone, that you can just install there some application that you want to mine and then put your address and then click the <coughs> mining button and then that's it. Or there is a fun way you can try to gamble, for example, you can try mining Bitcoin on the CPU, even though there is a 70 years is the average of finding a block, 
or getting uh, 25 Bitcoin, but if you're lucky, you can get one, but who knows? One Bitcoin today is $6,000. And for education, the codes are open source, so the Bitcoin source code is available online. And if you want to teach more advanced students and to do a more advanced experiment, you can tell them to write a minor code, you can tell them to write another blockchain, uh, right within Bitcoin, or you can just write an existing application. So I will quickly finish this. So this is now our innovation. So we want to attract out the miners. This is the bottom one is the solar panel, and then the power bank, and this is the sticker board computer. So these items are easy to get, and they are affordable, which are around 100 to 160 dollars. So that's why uh, I chose that innovation. And the steps are like this, but it's very general, so I will skip this one. So financially, it is simple. Yes, it's the size is only a whole desk. And I did a measurement. For example, the rate, how much electricity we need to generate and how much energy uh, resource it costs. This is the financial report. So we make a, so we turn from a non-profitable into a profit. And now we'll finish the presentation. So financially, it does not work if you want a profit because it takes one dollar to earn 500 days. But if you want to secure and decentralize the network, which is our objective, we meet the, uh, our objective. So you can ask any kind of questions, even though outside of this topic. Thank you. It was so helpful for us. <laughs> yeah, so do you have any questions? Yeah. I just have one simple question. Like, how far do you think that it's safe to get a code from the internet and then think that we are doing cryptocurrency? How safe it is that? How to get the code from the internet? Getting no. the code from the internet is that means that it's easy to. Yeah. So, so it depends on any cryptocurrency. There is many out there. So the top cryptocurrency there is Bitcoin and Ethereum. It's uh, Bitcoin has survived for ten years and is already too big to be stopped. So even the 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 high people in the US, the senators, they try, they even say that the Bitcoin is unstoppable because it's too big already. The, you need 180, oh, I forgot, billion computers to attack. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay. So this is yours. Okay. Thank you. Very much.